I'm just gonna go ahead and start the video here. Just so you guys know, this is not an iPhone. I uh, I took the cover off my phone and I didn't realize how disgustingly dirty my phone was. Anyways, this is gonna be a compilation video of the F1 race truck build. I think my dad bought it when I was like 17 and then it just sat in the backyard and this compilation is gonna start with uh, the first video of me pulling out of the backyard. I actually had the truck at my shop uh, when I was running my shop and I did a bunch of work to it and then I actually just threw the chassis away because I didn't like it. Um, and that's where this build starts is the cab sitting in the backyard and the chassis that I got sitting in the garage. Hope you guys enjoy it. I know there's been a bunch of people who have watched the whole series, which thank you. If you haven't watched all the videos, please go back and and watch everything. I'll have uh, the links in the description below. Um, there's a couple videos that I couldn't get because I lost them when I got a new computer. But for the most part, this is like all encum all encumbering, huh? <laughs> all encompassing. Yes, encompassing. Anyways, all the good stuffs in this video. Okay. So, but if you want to see more detailed videos, the links are in the description. Like I said, uh, thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting. This video took me a while to find all the footage, so I hope you guys enjoy. Just hold it and I'll move it. Okay. It's coming out of hibernation over, what, a year? Sitting here. Look at all that rust, dude. I call that weight reduction for the, you know, the race truck I'm building. Oh, God. Cool. Rolled off and smashed head up there. Blue. Oh, your strap just went loose. Hey. Oh, beans. Now all I gotta do is cut that, cut this, splooge them together. All right, ow, f I'm gonna uh, just strip this wiring out, just unplug it all and uh, get this firewall off. So the chassis that I went with was a 1997 Ford Explorer with the 5 liter and the 4R70W, I believe. Uh, right here you can see that I'm just tearing out all the wiring. I don't know what I'm actually going to reuse or buy new, so I'm just trying to save everything and label. Um, right there I'm just pulling the fuse block out of the, out of the firewall. There's the rear harness or interior harness. Steering column's off. Fuse block and these connectors. I think I can go ahead and start cutting what I need to. And I need to get the computer out. Should have it all torn apart here in like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. Hell yeah! Shit. Maybe care. I'm just cutting out where I want the truck to actually be channeled because uh, well, there's a lot of rot and I want this truck to sit pretty low on the chassis. Cut seven inches out of the back of the cab. I was gonna cut about 45 off, but I just left about an inch and a quarter on each side for some play, just in case it was too much. That side's on the frame rail, this side's not. So I mean, it's got it's got a little bit of wiggle room right now, so I might leave it or I might cut the rest of it off. I don't know yet. I'm not gonna cut the rest of the floor out. I was gonna cut some of the firewall and then I was thinking about cutting the center section out so I can actually lay it down over the frame rails to where I want it. I need to buy some metal to brace up the cab so it don't flop around like it is now. Look at it. I think I got a lot done. Been sitting for like a year, so this is the most work I've ever done on it. So I'm kind of, I guess you could say channeling it, probably seven inches, but I don't know if the floor is actually going to be that high. With the material and everything, it might hang down. It might be like six inches, maybe. 
Yeah, it's obviously need to be slid forward, but I gotta cut the firewall out. But I think this is a pretty good start on this thing. This is where I'm gonna cut first on the firewall. I don't wanna end up taking too much right now and end up having to put stuff back, because that sucks. I'm gonna be kinda cautious in how I cut it and try not to mangle anything. Uh, I don't need the lower cab mount. I'm not using that. This side's worse. You can see right there that I already have the interior support bars all loaded up, and that was actually part of one of the videos that I couldn't find uh, on my computer. So go back and go look at that video where I set the body all square. Started rethinking my original floor plan idea. Bought some. Some sharpies, some silver sharpies, and some fine line sharpies. Bought some more wheels and sawzall blades. Went out to good old Harbor Frat. Bought some spot weld cutters. My plan was to drill out all the spot welds and pull these panels out so I don't ruin them so I can keep them as templates. Or if I find some, I can, I guess, toss them. That's the goal today. Just get all these spot welds drilled. Well, there you go. Got the inner brace out that was right here, all the way to here. Yeah, the main reason I cut this piece, that piece off, is because this opening right here. So my two by two, this is the top. This is where the top of the two by two is going to sit. So if you can see, the only thing I'd be able to weld is right on the top, maybe on the front. But right here, there's really nothing left. It's all rotted. I got the spot welds where I think they are, kind of scribbled on. Got these ones marked. I'm not sure the cab likes sitting on its back. My door gaps aren't, aren't the same. <laughs> so before I weld anything up, I'm, I'm gonna flip this thing back on its top side. Get that squared away again. I don't know why it moved. It wasn't moving earlier. Not a whole lot to say on this clip, just uh, drilling out spot welds. It's always fun. Once again, I'm just trying to keep all of the panels intact. That way I can use them as templates. Um, I ended up not using any of those, but hey, I had them on the shelf just in case I needed to use them to measure stuff. safety gear on man why I'll be right back try to get it out oh yeah tetanus <laughs> flew right my eyeball safety gear is not enough guys Take two. I'm not losing an eyeball this time. There you go. That piece. Pull it out of there. Wolf getting exciting. I'm gonna take the windows out. I don't know why, just want to. So for the rockers and all the frame in the floor, I'm actually using 2x2 120 wall tubing. And you can see right there that I'm putting them up on the A and B pillars trying to figure out where the channel is going to be.
There we go. That's all I'm gonna do tonight. I'm gonna clean up. But, it's about where the floor is gonna be, in comparison to the rest of the truck and where it used to be. I think that actually looks pretty good. Obviously I gotta do trimming. Um, I'm just rough cutting it right now. Let me get some good angles here. Oh yeah, oh. I'm just kidding. I was gonna do the back bar, but it's kinda getting late and my neighbors already hate me, so. I likey. If you guys like these kind of videos, oh my god, my glove is terrible. Okay, I'll get new gloves. If you guys like these videos, you know, I'll share them around. You know, hopefully other people can see it. Hopefully other people are trying to build something like this. Like a rally, race truck, something, autocross, piece of junk. Throw some ideas off each other and stuff. And, you know, the, the few people have asked questions and stuff. Thanks, guys. Kind of keeping the motivation going. I know I can only get on it a couple hours a day because of work and stuff, but it'll eventually get there. I did get the rocker on the driver's side. Now. So here's the 2x2 two two square tubing. Um, got the front cow panel welded in, tubing welded up. Had to pie cut here, do a pie cut here to get them to line up right. So I did a. Uh, I sandwiched two pieces of 16 gauge. That uh, it's pretty strong now. It's about seven inches higher the floor is from the top, from the floor surface. So it'll be channeled down a pretty good ways from stock. Let me shut the door. So it shuts pretty good. Got the body line, the body gap pretty good all the way down. My next step after getting all the floor completed and everything and the cab set on the frame and start all that crap to do the pulleys and do a new water pump and delete the AC, uh, let's see, cut these transmission lines and reroute them. Um, that's about it. There's not too much to do on the engine, probably tune up and oil and hope the transmission still works fine. <laughs> Alright, it's Monday and got the couple pieces I need to get cut done. Got this piece drilled and cut. I got the cow panel marked out and about to cut it and I gotta draw one more five inch by five inch square. Drill some holes in that. Should be pretty good. It's probably all I'm gonna get done tonight. We'll see how this week goes. If I could do a little each day after work, um, should be should be pretty good to have this done this weekend or this week I mean. Once again, it's gonna be channeled about seven inches. So I'm actually making these base plates for the rockers to sit on that are actually the same shape, just taller. Uh, that way the cab has some support. That way it doesn't just flop around and you lose your door spacing. Pretty much I built this whole truck with a drill, a grinder, some sheet metal, and a cheap mid welder. You can actually get a lot done with those three things. Especially in a two car garage like I was in. Once again, I'm just keeping this whole truck pretty pretty much rusty, uh, but everywhere I'm gonna be welding to, I want it to be super solid. Oh man, it's Friday. Well, Saturday morning. It is 12.52 Friday night. I finally got most of the floor down. <laughs> Woo! One rocker. Two rocker. Back brace, not fully welded in, but in enough. that door there's my little cow panel welded up steering column's gonna go right about 
right there. Um, it's all the way telescoped in, so. But it should, once I get the whole fit, it'll be about the same angle that it was in the Explorer. Heater core is gonna be pretty, uh, pretty bitchin'. It's pretty much in the same spot as there's the heater core inlet and outlet right there, and here's the ones on this engine. Steering column. It's probably going to end up going right here, so got me a little chair, plenty of race car. Had to do some, pretty much cut a bunch of stuff back out. So once it was on the frame, the driver door would not shut anymore. It's about a half inch too low. But fixed it. I had to booger the shit out of those welds and cut them off and grind them and stuff. And so now the body line, they're all. Look at that. No binding at all. That's awesome. End of the weekend and this is where I've gotten so far on the truck. Got the whole front clip mocked up. Uh, the truck's on it. Everything else has been done since that last little video. But the door's still shut good. Just wanted to show you guys the front clip. If you guys like seeing what I'm doing with this truck, uh, subscribe, like, comment, share the videos and stuff. Helps out a bunch. All right, gonna start working on the truck. See where I left last left off at. Last left off at. Say that six times fast. Turn my music up. That's down. You can probably tell by now. In between each video, a lot of time actually passes, and I collect junk and push the truck over to the corner. You can see right there I'm working on a four wheeler in the foreground. So yeah, it's a lot of moving parts back and forth and takes time when you got a full time job. Even though a lot of time passes in between all of these videos, um, there's probably not a day that goes by that I don't want to work on this truck. <laughs> so every time I can work on it and just do one weld or one grind, um, it's pretty satisfying. I love the way the engine sits in the truck. Looks way bigger than it is. <laughs> yeah, you can see how far it's channeled down. There's the frame. There's the top of the fender. That's probably about 16 inches or so. Man, does it look mean. Woo! It sucks working so much because I really don't have any time for this thing. Um, trying to trying to fit it in my schedule. Man. Just want it done. <laughs> got the garage mostly cleaned up and the truck moved away from the workbench. I got the cab and the front clip pretty much centered where it's going to be. I think I'm going to raise it up about a half an inch. Wheel wells are pretty center. I might slide it forward about a, another half inch. The wheelbase is, I believe, two inches shorter than the original wheelbase of this truck. So I'm going to kind of cheat and move it up a little bit so it looks centered. These are the body mounts I bought. I actually don't remember where I got them. Probably Amazon. Now I'm trying to figure out how these things go. I'm guessing. Of course, no instructions. Not sure. Getting the body mounts laid out in the configuration I want. Raise the floor up half inch all the way around. It's pretty squared up. Looks pretty good on the chassis. Here's where I'm at now. Here's going to be the mounts that are going to be welded to the frame. There'll be a hole drilled right there, and then I've got to make another mount for the, the cab itself. Once again, almost everything on this truck was done with a grinder and a drill. You can see I'm cutting out, I think that was 3 8 plate steel that I got from the scrapyard. Those are actually the body mounts that the rubber bushings are going to sit on. I'm pretty sure they're going to be strong enough. And yes, there was a point that I had short hair. <laughs> Big body mount hole drill, clamped in, pretty much where I want it, put the body mount. This is how I think I'm gonna do it. 
put this 2x2 two two right over the top, drill a hole, um, sleeve it, and that way the bolt will go all the way through this frame, the body mount underneath, and then obviously it'll be flush with the floor. That way the bolts will be above the sheet metal, that way I can get the cab on and off pretty quickly. Obviously there's no gussets right now. That side's the same. I'm gonna have to build the rear mounts, weld them all in, get them all solid, and then take the cab off and cut the old ones off. Cause I think I'm gonna go about right there with it. So it'll be almost where the original ones were, but uh, I'll have to cut it out cause I'm making a completely different design. Got the truck on the ground. There's the body mounts, no gussets yet. Already looks pretty good, pretty solid. Now I gotta take the whole thing apart, cut all the old brackets off, do some trimming on some stuff, and then put it all back together, weld the front up. Whoops. This thing looks sick. I don't think I'm gonna lower the suspension any. I think it's gonna sit right where I want it to. What's left of the old fender is exactly four inches off the ground from this bottom piece of rust. So I'm gonna make a panel to bring it back so I can bolt the running boards back on. They sit about right here in the truck. Be pretty good, good line of sight. I need to order the seats. But the floor is uh, quite high off the ground since I channeled it so much. The body mounts on the Explorer are actually pretty close to where I wanted them. But since I was going to move them around anyways, I just went ahead and just made my own mounts. Let me tell you, Ford puts those body mount brackets on there like they don't want them to come off for some reason. All right, I think that's about all I'm gonna do tonight. Pretty tired. Pretty much had uh, seven, seven hours working on it. I call it a pretty good day. Got that old body mount down. La, 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 la. Got that old body mount off. That one, my batteries are overheated, so that one's almost out. Got this little tab off. Really haven't been working on it. Been working on this car and my Bronco and cleaning the house, getting on the trees and stuff, whatever. Anyways, got this mount, this mount, and this mount done. Hello! I've got the concrete in. Oh my god. And over here I got the F1 parts. So I'm gonna give you guys a little update on the race truck since the last time you guys saw it. Nothing has happened. I haven't touched it. But I have been buying parts. So I got one seat. As you can see, we got the uh, Dodge Ram hooked up. We got the uh, trailer. We're very excited tonight because today's the day that someone you know is taking home the race truck. 
the race truck. And just so just so everybody knows that I don't joke about how much it rains. Right. It's raining. Can it rain harder? That's what the question is. It can. Right. I don't want it to. But uh, since there's no light and it's raining and this is going to be miserable, I'm not going to videotape no more. See you guys back in my house. The inside is mostly the same, but it's got a steering wheel. It's got a steering column. Let's see if I can pan you guys right there. It's stuck through the firewall right there. I had to cut the dash out so the gauge cluster is not going to go where it originally went. Now, as far as the engine, I had the intake off, the water pumps broke, so I got to fix that. Um, and then I got to start on all the EFI. Dun dun! Yeah, I went with purple wheels. <laughs> They're, uh, I would say the word is awesome. Terminator X Max. So that's everything I got going on with the race truck. All the new parts I've got. That I need to install. Still need to buy the water pump and stuff. Finally got some MIG gas, some 7525 for my welder. So I might as well not procrastinate. I want to try to get this front cross radiator all welded up. As well as be done with the inside. The extra floor braces need to be welded up. Seat brackets, shifter bracket, and then I need to drill the hole for the brake booster, or the uh, brake pedal, the heater, and my dash. These are the things that I'm going to try to hook up. It's Holly's 7 inch screen. It's going to go where the radio would have went. I've got this switch panel, ignition on, start, and two accessories. It's probably all I need for that truck. And then I got the Willwood brake pedal with the dual reservoir master. And then also a small summit heater. Hopefully this is way more than enough to keep this small cab heated in the winter. And you can see right here, more welding. We've got all the bracing done on the floor. Just over time, uh, just piece here, piece there. I'm just fully welding everything, got all my measurements, made sure everything was square, and ready to rock and roll. I wanna go ahead and address getting rid of this original master and booster. Um, I was gonna run this and just kind of hook the hook the lines in, bypassing the ABS, um, but I decided <clears throat> that this style pedal was gonna actually suit me a little bit better, especially with the lack of leg room, and then I got my portioning valve as well. So let's go ahead and remove. Oh. Hello. Let's go ahead and remove this. I bet it's a, yeah, 13. Okay, I think this is the best option. I cut the top of the dash out and just threw some self tappers in there for now. Um, once I make the plate for this, I'll cock it a little bit more to the to the bottom. We got ignition, start, probably headlights and probably high beams. Um, then got the steering wheel, so it's not crazy in the way. Start or through here, start. Really, the only thing I'm going to do at the inside is wire wheel it and red scotch bright it, throw some epoxy, and paint it. So, I've got a lot of the firewall welded up. 
I've got the old master hole welded up. I've got the new master drilled and slotted. I'll put a picture up there for you. And then, let's see. What else have I done? Got the heater brackets made. Kind of hard to tell. Dash is cut out for the switch panel. Uh, steering column's out. Everything's out. The only thing I have left to do really is this brace right here. This was actually really exciting because I knew that this was the last time that this cab was going to be off the frame uh, before everything was painted and finished up. And this was like coming to the end. On another note this morning, I got the Holly dash bolted in. It looks really good. Here, I'll show you. It'll, it'll be a little jank, but... Haha, <laughs> look at that. That's awesome. This thing's gonna just come together really nicely. I don't even think they still make that model welder. I think they make a little bit bigger one now. But that thing has been a workhorse for years. Got that all welded on the inside as well. Looks good. This guy. All the bottom is welded. I added my cross braces. Just got to put some caps right there on the ends. I got to trim this one a little shorter to match the other side. Chassis in the mud. Perfect. Got my little pressure washer. And I've managed to find about 300 feet of hose. Okay, no leak there. No leak there. No leak there. Oh, wow. Um, one leak, two leak, three leak, four leak, and five leak. Well, that's a bummer. Just gonna run it, see what happens. This is uh, the first time I've ever washed the truck since I bought it. That was probably about seven years ago that I got uh, the Explorer and took the body off and kept the frame. It had some dirt and grime and all the grease on it. I had to get everything off so I could paint it. Firewalls primed with some red rusty primer. I'm gonna be painting Right into the door jam that way when the door shuts you, you don't see any green And then everything's been scuffed. There's a couple pinholes here and there. I'm probably One day gonna be putting a manual in this so I'm gonna be cutting the trans tunnel back out of it So what I'm gonna do is just paint it and then put a little bit of sound detonator right at the tow board. It'll be fine. It's not perfect. It's a rat rod. I know rat rods are kind of out of style now, but this is what I want. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to run. Oh, that's going to look good on that truck. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good looking color. With how thin this stuff is, Can you see that? I don't know if I should be using the big gun, but I already cleaned it and I already got it out. So we're gonna run with the big gun. I think throughout this whole build, I never thought that I would actually get to the point where I was actually gonna paint the interior. Like that was an idea I had, but I just figured I probably would never get to it. And now that I'm actually priming it, it just, it just feels so surreal. She looking good. 
all one color for once. This looks really good. Got the roof. I think I got most of it covered. Got the dash covered real nice. It just looks so much better. Just, just one color. I know it's not nice. Don't get me wrong. The camera probably fools you and makes it look nice, but I think it's actually gonna turn out kind of cool. Like it's been painted, but like no body work. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. I'm excited. Now I read the instructions, and this is four to one, which. is a little concerning, figuring that I used two quarts just to do the primer. I'm hoping this covers better than the primer did. Now the primer had a lot to cover, so there's that as well. This just has one color to, one color to cover. I'm pretty sure I said it, but this is just a single stage a Summit Racing Jade color. actually turned out really good. I think this is the first time I sprayed their single stage stuff. Doors are done, dash, floor, bracing. Um, and the visor is done. All the jams themselves are done. Wow, I am glad I got that painted last night because today has been a complete monsoon. All the rain, the cab is completely soaked. Oh. I think it had time to dry. Hopefully. It doesn't look messed up, so. Today's the day. I'm gonna be painting the frame on the race truck. Everything's been cleaned off, blown off. It's had time to dry. And I think I'm ready to start mixing and spraying. This is Summit Racing's single stage chassis black. I actually really like this stuff. I sprayed it on a few projects and it seems to hold up really nice. All right, there it is. The chassis is painted black. I kind of just bombed over everything, including the shocks and the brakes and the fuel filter and all that. That's because I'm gonna replace them. And I wasn't too worried about painting over all that stuff or masking anything up. I think I got pretty good coverage over everything. If I didn't, I'll hit it with a rattle can later. But for now, this gets this gets the chassis done to where I can put the cab back on it, hopefully for the final time. I've already done the measurements. So it's 53 inches. Oh. 27 and a half until this ridge. Let's see if this thing fits. paint the bottom it's not just blasting this green paint with <laughs> believe it or not this is actually just the trunk spray stuff you get at the auto parts store a bunch of it was getting thrown out so I figured hey if it's still good I'll use it got all the trunk spray sprayed 
Uh, this stuff was really, really old, and I'm talking probably closing in on seven or ten years old. Most of the cans worked. Those two cans didn't, but we got the whole underside coated. My floor is completely ruined, but whatever. Yeah, it's like 40 degrees. Probably shouldn't be painting this stuff, but we're done. Tomorrow morning, we're going to put this thing back on the cab. This was uh, a long time coming. This cab was not coming back off this frame. Now I'm just putting the steering column back in it and getting everything bolted back up. Everything's covered in a nice film of dust at this point. Brake master. Shifter. I cut off the ball and socket ear off the original shifter. And then here is the adapter for the BNM. Usually goes in one of these holes right there. But this shifter needs to be longer, so I'm thinking about it's gonna be kind of redneck. I'm thinking about just welding that at whatever, you know, angle that needs to be there. <laughs> and I think it's gonna work. I mean, let's be honest. It's gonna be under the truck and no one's gonna know. Who would know? I mean, come on. I actually went and spent the coin for some new glass. I figured the bullet hole was not gonna do me justice. While I'm waiting for some of the front accessory drives, I'm going to start on the Terminator X Max. And I've already halfway kind of figured out where everything goes. So I'm going to start laying some wire and figure out where the ECU is going to go and then where all the wires are going to go into the cab. This is just pulling all the wiring harness and making sure all the connectors are there and trying to figure out a game plan of actually where I'm gonna route this wiring harness through the truck, because it's actually not for this truck. I've got the main harness just zip tied to the uh, transmission dipstick. It's probably gonna get mounted on the firewall somewhere. You've gotta think, this harness is for a Fox body, so it's gonna be really long actually slightly inconvenient but we will make it work let me turn some light on for y'all we have got the terminator mounted underneath the dash the plugs are facing backwards which is a little bit inconvenient but it works i've got the fuse mounted up there on the firewall for the main power and you can see that the big harness loops around actually really nicely it's gonna it's gonna eventually get you know turned into there and then here is the main ground and power wire goes down the kick panel drill a hole and put a grommet and then goes up and over the frame rail to the back side over here wherever I'm gonna mount my battery I haven't done that yet this Terminator X Max is actually for a Fox Body Mustang all the way up to 97, I believe. This is a 97 Explorer chassis. So for the most part, it works besides I, I do have a distributor list five liter, which I just bought one off eBay. The oil pressure switch is gonna get replaced with an oil um, 100 PSI transducer. And then that, that'll plug in right there. Not much I had to change, just some pins. Some of these pins on the Explorer to Fox Body stuff is a little different. So as long as you still have your harness, you can hopefully save this and uh, repin them. Seat bolted in permanently. Cleaned out the inside. Um, nothing else done to the shifter. Tinkering with some of the wiring. Got the heater switch installed. Got the brakes all plumbed up. So we've got our master, got our front lines. I had to make, or didn't really have to make, but I went ahead and just made this short line to this caliper. 
put a T fitting, and then I reflared the original line with this stainless flex part. Uh, that way I didn't have to run underneath the engine to that side. So we got the passenger front, driver front, and then I did the same with the rear line. I cut off the braided part, bent it over the frame rail behind the control arm, and then into our proportioning valve for our rear brakes. Right now I've got them set at full brakes. I made the fitting come up. And then we've got our brake switch T right here, which I don't have the brake switch yet, but at least the brakes can be bled right now. I'm gonna install the brake switch after I do the wiring. That way, at least for right now, I have brakes. I mean, I don't even have tail lights, so the switch doesn't really matter. And that's gonna break. There it is, broke it. Knew that was gonna happen. It's bad. Oh, that fuel rail is like super close to the distributor. But it's in there. It went back on the oil pump shaft. Boom. Well, that didn't look as cool as I thought. Finally, at the point where we're actually putting the intake back on the truck. I actually lost this during the move and had to dig it out of just a pile of junk parts. American Auto Wire hot rod wire and harness. So here it is, I'm trying to run all the wires so I can at least get the ignition switch hooked up. So this is gonna take me the rest of the night and hopefully by tomorrow I'll be able to at least just kick it over and see. I'm an idiot. I don't have the coil hooked up. Okay, we have got the switch panel all wired in as far as ignition. And that would consist of the ignition feed, the main 12 volts for the hot rod harness. We've got the black and, or not black, uh, red and white for the trigger on the terminator. And then we've got our trigger wire for our solenoid on the starter. That's all wired in on the first two switches. And then we've got obviously our terminator harness. We've got the ignition for the coil right there. This goes to the fuse box and the switch panel. And this comes off the starter that connects to the battery. This is the trigger wire for the starter that just runs down there. And we've got the battery wire. I don't know if you can see that, it's right there. That'll do it. The sock is gone. The fuel pump is rusting literally away. And the sending unit is complete garbage. Calipers, pads, and rotors on this one. Caliper rotors and pads on that one. Now it's time to do the rear. Look at all that flake. That's supposedly gasoline at the bottom. Not really. Got the gas tank pulled out. Ordered one offline, hopefully that'll be here this weekend. We have got the brake pedal bracket made, painted, bolted in. Whoop. We have got the pedal and push rod. Brakes are done. Now I'm moving on to the throttle pedal and uh, make that clip into the body. And actually that'll be airtight. Not like this truck doesn't have rust holes all in it, but That'd be pretty cool, keeping the stock throttle cable. So I drilled half inch hole and kind of squared off the edges with a file. That way this end can fit in there. You see how it's kind of got like a cross shape to it? Yesterday was a great day.
Gas tank's in, all the brakes are on, all the brakes are bled, I already said all that. Gas pedal, done. Brake pedal, done. Uh, shifter, not done yet. The Holly Dash, in. I had to do a lot of little minor adjustments and tuning to get this thing to do this. Oh, yeah. Hear the fuel pump kick on and off? You ready for it? <laughs> it lives! <laughs> Dude, it has been literally like six years since this truck has ran. It's a Fox Buddy harness, kind of universal onto a explore thing with the TFI converted distributor and, and an idle air control from a 90s F-150 and a bunch of hacked up things on this truck. It needs tuning, but it runs. And that is, oh dude, the feeling I have right now, I can't even, I, I literally can't even describe it right now. This has been a long time coming and it's been like 10 years overdue for me to have this truck running again. This truck is maybe, I'm gonna say a week away from me being able to rip it around the yard. Damn. Got all my cars in the shop. It's pretty clean. But you might notice that the race truck is missing and probably wondering why all of the cars are in the shop and that is because I am moving kind of unexpectedly so had to wrap up all our projects and the only thing I'm really taking is the power wagon and the race truck and a kayak here it is the race truck is on the trailer it actually drove on the trailer on its own reverse works and first gear works uh, don't have the trans controller hooked up, so don't really know if it shifts. Now this is actually from the Power Tour video. You guys can go watch that. I think that one turned out really good. Me, Chris, and Kyle doing Power Tour. Um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff once I moved to Florida that I got done off camera, just trying to hustle. Maiden voyage-ish. Going to my buddy's house. Uh, doesn't drive too bad, needs a little bit of tuning, nothing crazy. Not bad, not good, but not bad. So we got this crazy vibration, 90% sure it's my piece of shit truck. Yeah. We're gonna transfer that. I mean, you can see where you've been driving at. Mm -hmm. It's like the most you spun this engine up to was like around 4,500. This is literally the moment that I've been waiting for with this truck. It was the autocross. Yeah. Actually, see me burning the tires off right there. Surprisingly, this truck did phenomenal. Like, way better than what I actually thought it was gonna do. You know, it's got rack and pinion steering, disc brakes, front and rear, adjustable uh, proportionate valve. It uh, it all came together and actually works really good. Yeah, this thing's awesome. <laughs> You can actually see that it doesn't have that much body roll. I mean, for a big truck, it has a little bit, but way less than I thought. It's got some pretty beefy sway bars on it. The one issue I actually had was the transmission controller just, I don't know if it's transmission or the controller, if it needs a bunch of tuning, but it did not like staying in second gear when you flat footed it. It would just kick up into third and then drop back down into second. Really know what that's about, but I'll fix it eventually. 
I'm gonna slide the drash shaft a little bit out of my way. Oh yeah, I can do this. Yeah, so the floor hits the tail shaft and was vibrating the whole truck. Unbearable. So on the second stop, we actually just locked the bottom of the frame out of it. When I say that I did not test this truck before I took it on power tour, I did not. I went up the road, I don't know, a couple miles and was like, we're ready. And absolutely nothing went wrong with that truck. You can see that I actually was manually shifting the truck on this track. Did way better. I picked up probably like 15 miles an hour through the whole course. I heard a couple guys saying when they came up to me after I was done autocrossing that I was actually pedaling on some other trucks that were way more built than my truck, like two seconds behind them. So I think if I had a little bit more seat time and probably adjusted air pressure and messed with the tune a little bit, I probably could have gotten some really decent times out of this truck. All right guys, that's it. Power tour was over. The truck runs great. We did about 1,500 miles in this truck with almost no hiccups. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys later.